Nice. So today's lesson is going to be a bit about risk, which is a fairly short chapter in uh, terms of um, unit four. Uh, there's some much bigger chapters coming forward, so we'll get through all this content in one lesson. And it might seem like we're getting through the course uh, very quickly, uh, but we will slow down um, when there are bigger chapters. We can go into things in more detail. And also we will revisit things because um, to fully understand this, you need to know some other things in future chapters. It all sort of ties together. So um, it seems straightforward for now, and it is fairly straightforward for now, but just uh, a little warning that it's going to get um, a little bit more tricky in this. So if you read the notes on risk uh, last week, then hopefully you can fill in these blanks. Okay, I'll give you a uh, minute to have a go at filling in these blanks uh, without looking back at your notes, otherwise I will go through them. So pause the video now, uh, give yourself a little bit of time, and um, I will then go through them. Okay, so first one is financial risk. So, um, for example, the probability that a major customer becomes bankrupt and does not pay uh, it's basically everything to do with money. So if you have a shortfall in money, if you don't have enough money for something, if you didn't earn enough money, if you didn't earn enough profit, if you can't pay people, all these sorts of things are financial risks. Um, then the next one is operational risk. So operational is to do with the production line. So a machine breaks down. Um, there's somebody who... Um, isn't trained very well and doesn't produce very good stock. Quality control doesn't um, do its job or you change your quality control policy and things don't go well. Basically, this is all the different risks to do with your production line. Um, then there is strategic risk. So this is all the different things to do with um, I have changed our plan or have changed our strategy or um, some other competitors come along and change strategy for you um, and then it's just coming up with all the different sort of the right moves to take for be best for your uh, business there might not be an obvious right one so it might be a case of whatever decision you make there's going to be some strategic risk involved and the last one there is compliance risk. So that is, um, you've got to respond to introduction new health and safety legislation. And um, so that's whether it's giving people appropriate training, uh, safety equipment, protective equipment, all this different sort of thing. There might be a number of options available to you, um, including sort of... Uh, different um, options if you move things abroad where perhaps the laws are different um, or perhaps not following certain laws even though you should um, and all these different things whatever you do is going to be a risk there's a risk even if you follow everything to the letter because um, it might cost you a lot of money and it could cut out some of your um, profit so to do with all the laws and legislation there is compliance risk and uh, so there are the four main types of risk. Okay, what I want you to do now is, um, again, it shouldn't be too difficult if you have read the notes, uh, to come up with four quantifiable risks and four unquantifiable risks. And just to tell you what that word means, quantifiable means you can put a number on it. So four risks that you could put a, a number, a actual pound value on what the risk is, what you're risking and four things which you can't put a number on what you're risking. So pause the video now, have a go at doing that, and then um, I'll talk you through some possible answers you could have given, but certainly not uh, limited to the ones I give. Okay, so um, quantifiable risks. So they could be things like um, a machine breaks down. You've got this machine, it costs a certain amount of money, and if it breaks down, then it will cost you this amount of money to replace or repair. Um, it could be to do with uh, covering or replacing staff if they get sick. 
um, their salaries or the salaries of the people you need to replace them are going to cost things. It could be to do with um, changing the pricing strategy. Um, it could be to do with changing suppliers where things cost more or less and there's different sort of money sides uh, to it. So there's sort of all different strategic risks going on there. But uh, if we focus on the machine breaking down one, if it's a big expensive machine, um, you don't really want to have to replace it. And so what most people do is they have it insured because insurance company for quantifiable risks, they know how much uh, things would cost to replace, the likelihood if it's used properly that it would break down, um, and sort of they will sort of give you a price, you pay the insurance, and uh, that is your way of mitigating that risk of sort of minimizing the actual risk, which is what sort of a sensible company should do, because it might cost you a little bit of money when the machine doesn't break, but what when the machine or if the machine does break, it would save you a lot of money. Okay, some unquantifiable risks. So they are things which you cannot predict and you cannot put a number on. So it could be um, to do with uh, new, new competitors, new laws, civil unrest, global pandemics, all these different sorts of things which you can't easily predict and you can't easily put a number on how it affects you because you don't know exactly how it's going to affect you. It's the bigger picture things. Um, they're less possible to insure because it's less, you don't know what you'd be insuring against in a lot of cases. And in the cases where you do know what you're insuring against, you wouldn't know sort of how much it's worth. So you wouldn't know what to insure around it. So there's the difference there between quantifiable and unquantifiable risks. And quantifiable ones are easily um, solved with insurance. Um, quantifiable ones are a little bit more difficult to deal with. Okay. So um, here's some examples of some risks, internal risks, because they all come from within the company. Um, it's either from your employees or your product or your equipment. And uh, what we want to do is we want to talk about how we can minimize damage caused by these risks. So again, pause the video, have a go yourself of thinking about them, and I'll talk about some answers in a minute. Okay, so um, employee error. So employees make mistakes, things break, things don't get made properly. That could be a big error or it could be a small error. The person could have... Um, cost you just a bit of time it could have cost you a product it could have cost you a lot of time or a lot of products or it could cost you some uh, something bigger if uh, they made a bigger mistake it depends what the error is um, and the easiest way to minimize those risks is to make sure that you are employing appropriate staff ones who are qualified and trained to do the right thing and make sure that their training is up to date and Perhaps um, uh, appraisals, you know, um, you want to just check up on how they're doing. So all these things from Unit 2 are going to come back into play when it comes to answering a question about that, how to minimize employee error. Um, public relations failures. So you want to have sort of a strict policy written on um, who and how sort of public relation things are um, distributed. You don't want just any employee saying whatever they think about the company on social media, you know, distributing sort of perhaps somebody does something, you know, silly or unsafe or what they think is funny in the factory and then put it on Facebook and then everybody sees it and the whole company gets a bad name. So you just want to have sort of strict policies in place and um, somebody in charge of public relations in a bigger company to make sure that um, everything comes through them and they know it's not going to cause these public relations failures. And another way of sort of preventing public relations failures would be to just stay on top of um, just what, what's currently 
sort of ethical, moral, the sort of the values of your customer base. And um, so whether that's using sort of organic produce or environmentally friendly um, produce or carbon neutral, whatever it is, sort of you can sort of minimize these public relation failures by staying up to date with that product failures. So you're going to want to have um, good quality materials. So your sort of uh, purchasing department is going to want to purchase good quality materials. You're going to want your operations department to be well trained on how to make them. And also you're going to want to have a good quality control um, on that. So again, that's quality control. That's unit two. Coming back uh, to to uh, be a, a valid answer here, sort of good quality control is going to sort of, you're going to catch any failures before they're released to the public. And then failure of equipment, we talked about that already. Um, insurance is a good thing for unpreventable failure, but um, some failure can be prevented with proper training, maintenance, and sort of uh, repairs on that equipment. Um, okay, so there are internal risks. So let's do the same thing with some external risks. So you can pause the video, have a go do some of these yourself, and then we'll talk about them. Okay, so legal challenges, uh, now depending on what sort of uh, company you are, if you're a big company, perhaps you would have a legal department, which would deal with that sort of thing. And at the very least, if you're a smaller company, you would have a lawyer, um, somebody you could call in this sort of situation to, to either get advice from or to um, deal with things like this. You're not just going to try to uh, wade through sort of a series of legal documents yourself. If new legislation comes into place, you want to make sure that you are um, dealing with it appropriately. Natural disasters. So um, certain natural disasters are completely unpreventable. Certain ones are slightly more predictable. If you have got a factory that's built on a floodplain, then it's going to get flooded sometimes. And um, if you've got a factory built on a natural fault line where there's regular earthquakes, then you're going to get some earthquakes sometimes. And knowing all that and um, how to best deal with it if the situation is unavoidable, or perhaps in the, the first instance of um, just picking somewhere which doesn't have those natural elements. Um, but in the instances which you can't avoid it, then just sort of having staff properly drilled and trained on what to do in those sorts of situations, like uh, when we have fire drills, just knowing what to do by practicing and just having somebody think about them ahead of time is going to be a big benefit for this unknown thing. Um, supply chain problems. So if you require sort of some raw materials or your part made sort of uh, product from somebody else and then you do something else to it and do make the product and you finish it off, then you're going to want to uh, make sure that you have got trusted reputable suppliers. Perhaps you don't want to just go for the cheapest one. Perhaps you want to make sure that you have got sort of a good quality one. You want to be loyal and uh, get a good relationship with your supplier um, and uh, also perhaps have a backup supplier if things sort of unavoidably go wrong with one supply chain element. Um, so another thing would be, so some people might use just-in-time sort of um, production, but if you don't use just-in-time production, if you are producing things ahead of time, it could give you some lead time to uh, sort out that problem before it becomes too big of a problem. And economic factors, so they could vary on a lot of different things. And um, you could just sort of minimize the damage on those by just being a bit more conservative, making sure that you've got some money in the bank if things go wrong, some money to sort of actually live on, pay some staff who are um, perhaps unable to work through, you know, this global pandemic that we're in now, for instance, perhaps if the furlough scheme didn't exist, perhaps a lot more businesses would uh, just crumble 
Uh, but if you uh, were a more conservative person with your money, perhaps you'd have some to keep your company afloat uh, in the meantime when sort of things are tough. And also economic factors could be exchange rates. And if you've got a sort of a glo more global company uh, with um, branches all over the world, perhaps you could sort of move production to where it's economically more viable. Perhaps you could uh, look to trade with people where the economic factors are working in your favor. But we'll talk a lot more about economic factors in, in later chapters. Okay. Uh, and then risk management. So it's understanding and minimizing what could go wrong in an organization. There's four stages we've got here, which is identifying an analysis of the risks the company is exposed to. So if you're built on a floodplain, you know that risk. If you've got a new piece of if you, expensive machinery, um, you know sort of perhaps the sort of maintenance, what you've got to do to um, keep it right. You know that if that breaks, it's a risk that could um, mean your company's uh, going to be in a bit of trouble. Then a measurement of the likelihood of the risks occurring. So how will I build these machines? Um, how many staff have to be sick before it's a problem and we can't cover all the work we need to do? Uh, if some of these are going to be sort of a lot more accurate than others. Some are just going to be guesses. You're going to want to go on the sort of conservative side if you're playing it safe. And um, other people can perhaps be a bit more cavalier and risky with uh, this process and therefore um, not. They're going to go bankrupt a lot more often, but perhaps they might succeed in situations where they wouldn't otherwise. So uh, you've heard of the phrase fortune favors the brave, um, but also sort of those brave people can get bankrupted just as easily. There's an assessment of potential impacts. So if this machine breaks, you know sort of how likely it is to break, even if we keep good uh, maintenance of it. And how does that damage the company? How much money would it cost to repair? How much time would that take? How much uh, lost in the, um, production uh, time would that take? How many... Uh, customers would you lose because of it? So there's lots of knock-on effects of just this one machine breaking and deciding what action can be taken to eliminate or reduce the risk. So insurance, proper maintenance of the machine to make it less likely to happen. So uh, all these different things, uh, you could sort of have a, a company which could lend you their machine. You could sort of um, get have more product in the warehouse to um, fill in this demand while the machine's being broken. Lots of different things you could do. Sometimes you can't eliminate risk. Sometimes you can just reduce it. And um, this is contingency planning. So um, you've also got very big companies who will do contingency planning for unknown events, completely unknown events. For instance. Um, this, the pandemic that we're going through is a completely sort of unpredictable event. Uh, no company was sort of insured against it or no rational company would be insured against it. Nobody was expecting it. It just sort of happened. But there are big companies who have got teams of people which will sort of call to meetings and just they will have sort of ideas and a, a general plan of what to do, whether it's, okay, let's gather in all the news and let's figure out what's actually happening here and then discovering as quickly as possible how it's going to affect you, what you can do, and sort of all the different aspects of how it affects the company. So there's lots of um, different things a bigger company could do, but perhaps a smaller company wouldn't have the staff for that. You wouldn't, it wouldn't be a valuable use of your resources. Um, the amount of cost wouldn't cover uh, how much you'd stand to lose if you were put out of business for a few weeks. Whereas something a much bigger company, the cost of having one of these teams meeting and discussing things uh, could be sort of a very small cost compared to um, how much you could risk for the company. Okay. 
Uh, so last couple of things. Uh, have a think about these and um, I won't answer them here. Just, um, just have a go and think about contingency planning. I've talked a little bit about, about that already. Um, but just sort of think about how you would answer that question if it was an exam question. And you can have a look on the internet to actually find some internal risks and external risks. It's by doing things like this, you're going to fully understand this this content because if you just sort of make notes from what I've said and then just sort of close the computer down and close your folder and move on to the next thing, you're going to have to remind yourself of this next time you look at it and you'll only understand it on the surface level. But if you sort of research it and dig a little bit deeper for yourself, uh, then you're going to have a stronger understanding and it's just going to, the knowledge will stick and you'll be able to link it to other things easier. Okay, so no sort of, I'm not expecting any work handed in from today, but uh, if you've made some notes on this, great. If you've sort of understood it a bit better, great. If you can have a look at these couple of uh, statements here, that'd be great as well. Okay, that's it for this week.